again, I'm Dave and thanks for joining me again here in the Fat Fish Guitar Studio. Now I've been doing quite a bit of uh, talking recently both in these videos on YouTube and just to, to students in general about scales and kind of what notes belong in a key, what notes don't and all about keeping things diatonic so you're only using notes that belong to the key. Now in this video I want to kind of go away from that a little bit and talk about using notes that don't belong to the key or using things that generally music theories, particularly like traditional like classical music theory would tell you they're forbidden and you, you really shouldn't do. So talk about using notes that don't belong to the scale and one sort of really useful device um, is a particular interval which you might have heard of called a diminished fifth, so it's called the devil's interval. So it's quite useful for rock music and heavy metal and things like that. So if you're, if you're into this like darker sort of music styles, this sort of thing we'll probably find quite useful. So let's start about with talking about that, that interval, the, the diminished fifth. Now diminished fifth is uh, six semitones. So if you look at a major scale and the interval between the root and fifth degree, seven semitones, if you take that perfect fifth and lower it by a semitone, you get to a diminished fifth. Now a, Perfect fifth is a very happy sounding interval. Yeah, that's a pretty solid interval. If you drop it by just one semitone though, yeah, it's really dark. Uh, it, it's not happy, it wants to go somewhere. Uh, so I say sometimes it was called the, the devil's interval because it had such a um, such a dark or satanic sound, and some composers in the in the past have, have really exploited that. Uh, you'll you hear it quite a bit in in, in heavy metal. Um, good examples: Black Sabbath, the riff of Black Sabbath. So the diminished fifth you're hearing there is you're going up an octave and then that really dark interval there. Or you might hear it in something like this. Yeah, and a sandman. Another octave leap. And then down uh, the perfect uh, diminished fifth. So very useful in a rock context. And what I thought I'd do in this video is kind of show you a, a little uh, a little riff that combines use of that diminished fifth. Now, if you think about the um, the notes in a key, like so, we're going to work, work in a, a natural minor key here. If you look at the 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 notes of the natural minor, you've got one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. There's no flat fifth in there. So by using the, uh, an interval of a diminished fifth, say between the root and the flat five, we're already introducing outside notes. What I'm going to do in this riff is use some outside notes um, with that diminished fifth and also just like a, a slightly, slightly odd chromatic run. Okay, I'll play that through for you. You can hear how it sounds and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit. Let's take a look at what's going on there. First of all, I'm playing as low as possible. This guitar is in standard tuning. If you wanted to drop by a semitone or even a whole tone, this will sound even better, even heavier. But basically, I'm playing this in E and we're starting on an E power chord. But to keep it heavy and thick and palm muting, just basically playing a triplet pattern on that power chord for three beats. Then the last beat. I'm playing a B flat power chord. So going up by an interval of a, perf uh, of a diminished fifth from E to B flat, but that chord itself doesn't sound too horrid because it is a fully resolved chord. It's got a perfect fifth in it. But you've got the tension because you're going from, from the E to the B flat. You, you, the whole chordal motion is going up at an interval of a diminished fifth. And the chord on that last beat, I'm taking my, my hand away from the bridge and allowing it to ring out. So 
So for the, the main part of the riff there, I'm using power chords which have an interval of a perfect fifth in them. The last part of the riff, we're playing something that's very heavily around uh, diminished fifths. And I'll just switch to a clean sound for this so you can hear a little bit better. Now it's in that B flat power chord, I've got a B flat, an F, and a B flat. I'm going to use that B flat there as the start for a diminished fifth chromatic run where we're going from B flat to E to B flat. Then take the whole thing up by a semitone. So move the whole shape up and then play descending. So from a B to an F to a B. Then move the whole shape up again, semitone to C, G flat, C. And then the whole shape up again by a semitone to go D flat, G, D flat. And you can hear it's very dissonant. The, the fact you're going up in intervals of dimin a diminished fifth is, is kind of a little harsh on the ear. The fact that you're going up with just little chromatic runs, there's certain notes there that are going to belong to the key and other ones that don't. So it's all a little bit tense. And that's kind of the effect that we're going for. It's to give you something that's not pleasing to the ear. Now, I'm playing that clean so you can hear the notes a little bit, bit better. If you're playing it distorted, if you play, and you just play that without palm muting, the notes kind of bleed into each other a little bit too much. So for that, I recommend, even if you don't fully palm, palm mute it, What I'm, I was playing before is sort of like slightly palm muted. It's the palms on the those top three strings just enough to stop them ringing out completely, but the, it's not completely deadening them. Okay, so there's an idea. Uh, I'm not into sorry with my teaching style kind of giving you things to, to play verbatim so there's just an idea showing you how you can use diminished fifths you can use outside notes there's lots of notes there that don't belong to the key of E minor but we can string them together and get a reasonably what well, I think is a reasonably effective riff that does what I wanted to do it sounds quite dark it sounds quite dissonant it sounds quite challenging to the ear so the takeaway from this is diatonic um, notes are important you need to know what what notes are in a scale you now for building chords and whatnot uh, but don't be afraid of, of doing the scary things and doing the things that music theory says perhaps you shouldn't do like putting in outside notes or using strange intervals if you're prepared to be creative you can come up with um come up with things that just sound basically sound a bit more interesting now there's a place for purely diatonic and there's a place for going a little bit off piste like this so you know you have to use a, your, sorry, your judgment and your taste as well it's not a purely scientific uh, exercise but music you know music isn't a scientific exercise it's about creativity and and a bit of experimentation so there's an idea hopefully that kind of inspires you to go off and try a few things of your own if you like the video please click like down there if you really enjoyed it please click subscribe also down there and you'll be notified of any new videos that I post on the channel if you've got a question or a suggestion for a future video then if you go here you can fill the form and send your question in and I'll try and get around to answering your question as soon as I can. You're welcome to leave a comment down there, but to be honest, I don't always see comments left on videos, so if you ask a question there, I might not see it. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.